Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Mark Goodman, a.k.a. The Voice Box of the Block. I'm back with another one. I'm super, super duper excited. This is what this is what the world's been waiting on. This is what the upstate been waiting on. But first, before I get into it, let me shout out to all my distributors, Google Podcasts, Spotify Breaker, Radio Public. What's up? Thank you. I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to display my talent. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do what I do and do what I do well. What's up, Shane? My co-host, what's happening? Yeah, man, she's going to be doing, man, you know. I, 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 wow, this, this is, like, this is great, man. I think, I think oh, we got man, it done. I think we got it done on this one. I think we got it done, man. If you don't know, now you know, because I've been pushing all week. I'm not going to hold you none other than sweet feet. Sweet feet, Foggy. What's going on, baby? Hey, not much, man, up here in Minnesota, trying to stay warm, and I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Man, no problem, no problem, man. First and foremost, are you safe? Because I know the weather, the weather up there is a, is a little different than it is than it is this way. Yeah, the thing is, we used to it. We were, it was minus twenty one over the weekend, so uh, we just stay inside and hunker down, man. Hunker, hunker down, hunker down. That's what it is, man. Uh, uh, but but for your, for uh, all the listeners, for those who don't know, coming straight out of Lawrence, South Carolina, Mister Ricky Sweet Feet Fog is one of the best to ever do it. Uh, he ended up going to Minnesota, uh, playing in one of the biggest games in Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna go too far ahead of myself because I want to yeah. go down memory lane for a second, Shane. So don't, don't, please, please, if I'm rushing, tell me to yeah. slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say, man, like I say, um, you know, first of all, Rick, man, how, how you doing today, brother? You doing pretty good? Yeah, he's doing pretty good. He, um, he's out of out of uh, intensive care. He's out of the hospital now. He's rehabbing, so. He's on. He's on the upswing, and uh, I appreciate you asking about pops, and uh, he's doing well. Okay, definitely, definitely. Uh, I, see, I didn't know that. I was asking how you was doing, but wow, I, I, I didn't know that, man. I, I didn't know that. Um, you know, and you know, I hope everything comes together, Absolutely. man. You know, prayers, man, prayers, definitely. Well, well, we go, we, we go, we go, jump right into it, Rich, man. Uh, let's take, let's take it back to the beginning, man. Lawrence, South South Carolina, uh, being one of the first. Black option quarterbacks, man, you know, and I know those times was trying times, and and I think off the air you had mentioned one time about being being the quarterback coming out of South Carolina. Can you speak? Come, Carolina. Can you speak on? Yeah, I think at the time, uh, I, I don't think anybody, uh, you know, me or my teammates or uh, classmates, actually realized, uh, you know, that was happening at that time because. You know, we grew up in a really tight knit community. Um, mm. You know, me being from Waterloo, uh, a lot of players and students came from Gray Court, Ennery, you know, the surrounding counties of Lawrence. So, mm-hmm. you know, we all grew up together. Uh, I think our parents and the community kind of protected us from, you know, we didn't have to stray or stay away from certain communities because we was black, um, you know. You know, our friends was white, our teammates was white, and, and yeah, you know, I just think we were fortunate, fortunate from from our standpoint that, you know, we didn't, basically, we didn't have to deal with racism, you know, uh, personally. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure my dad, I, my dad did as a business owner, you know, owning his own barbershop since 1959, I'm sure. Wow. You know, he had to endure, endure some tough things there, but um, for us... You know, it was it was great, great community to grow up in, great community to uh, uh, attend high school, and uh, I think the most fortunate thing for us was that we actually got a new head coach um, mm-hmm. as we became juniors and Buddy Jennings, and he I think he made the world of a difference as us being uh, high school athletes and football players. Now, well, now, now as wow. you was as you was coming up, was was. Football with your your with your first your first love or was there any other sport because mm. uh, that that was interesting to see you 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 being a, a, a quarterback was that was on your mind or you was like okay I'm gonna try something else a quarterback was your, always your first love. No, mm. I, uh, I my first love was baseball. You know, wow, I figured that. Wow. Hey, 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 Yes, sir. I, uh, my yeah. uncle Lewis was uh, was a was a head coach of a, a baseball team in Waterloo, and he had huh. me actually playing uh, with that team when I was probably twelve years old. Wow! And it was and it was an adults 
um, baseball team. So, no, I always played. Baseball was my first love. I always played it. I loved it. Um, you know, I actually ended up playing four sports in high school. Mm. Um, baseball, football, basketball, and also ran track. So, wow. um, I was just fortunate one day uh, after my sophomore year, uh, Coach Leroy, who was our sophomore football coach, mm-hmm. uh, he came to me one day and said, hey, Rick, you know, we're getting this new football coach coming in. And uh, he said, you should try out for quarterback because you're a pretty good athlete. And I go, you know, well, I never played it before. So he, he goes, all summer I'll work with you. And, um, and we, once this new coach come in, I'll let him know you want to try out for quarterback. And, you know, and that's what we did all summer. He trained and worked with me. And, and the rest of it was uh, pretty much history. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. And, and as you as you going through, as you going through, and you and you dominating, and you playing, and you playing at the highest level. Are you thinking going to college? Are you thinking this is what you thinking? Yeah, that was no question. I had um, you know guys that went before me. I had two of my brothers went to college. My brother Perry played at North Carolina A and T, mm-hmm. and then uh, my brother Gerald played wow, at uh, South Carolina State. So no, I always knew I was going to go to college. I just didn't know at what sport I was going to play. You know, um, I seen Norris Brown, who played with my brother, another Lawrence great uh, tight end. You know, he went to the University of Georgia, and that was um, really something that I was proud of. And I, you know, I I figured that um, he could do it. I, you know, I want to go to Division One also. So I, you know, I made. That um, I stayed into my academics and. That wouldn't go hold me back, and so, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so you know, going to college was definitely one of the things I wanted to do. And I'm thinking, and listen, as I'm looking over, and I'm looking at your stats and studying your man, and when you went, and I mean, listen, I don't know if you was a man coming on campus, but you, you definitely made an impact, man. Three time MVP for the for the team holds the rushing holds the rushing record as a quarterback, four thousand four thousand nine hundred yard passing, three three thirty three touchdowns. Uh, along with two two thousand thirty eight hundred thirty eight hundred yards rushing, twenty four touchdowns, and uh, when, as soon as you stepped on the on the scene, you made an impact. Was and was it was uh was 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 this the thing that you thought you was gonna be? Because I know a lot of people come on and they had to seek and they fit in, but it seemed like you just stepped on and said, "I'm gonna take over." You had that mindset going in. Man, I had no idea. I knew uh, uh, <laughs> I was recruited right. by. One of the, the greatest coaches in college football history, right, absolutely. Coach Lou Holtz, and uh, yeah, Lou Holtz. Yeah, and one of the reasons I I chose Minnesota was the the fact mm. that he was given the opportunity to play quarterback. Um, mm. And so when I did, when I got on campus, you know, we, we went through. Actually, we had three of days back in the day. Um, they put me at a variety of positions. You know, put me at wide receiver, put me at huh. defensive back put me at running back and then um, going into the third week of uh, training I went in and talked to Coach Hose and kind of reminded him why I was there and so he put me back, <laughs> definitely. 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 Put me back at quarterback and I was I was actually fifth on the depth chart with two weeks to go into the first game so um, I went from fifth to the backup in that two week span and he put me in at, after halftime in that first game at Purdue and mm. I, didn't, I didn't let it go. I was a four year starter after that. Wow, man, you, you play you playing big boy football. So you you he and, and 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 Shane, uh, I don't mean, I mean to cut you off, but he came in and started the true freshman. Yeah. And and, and I thought that was thought that was I thought that I thought that was amazing. Yeah, definitely. Like 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 you know that you know I talked to Rick and uh, like I said, uh he was saying he's the uh first black quarterback that started in Lawrence, the right. first black quarterback that uh you in a state title. Right. Hey, Black, Rick. Black yeah, history. Yeah, definitely. Fair <laughs> word, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Rick, um, who did y'all play in the state? We played Walter like, And what was it like? And, and what was it like like that season? Like, what was it like? Like, were y'all just dominating everybody? Or, like, was it a tough season and y'all just made it through the playoffs? Or, like, who, who did y'all play in the state, Rick? You know? Yeah, it was, um, that was our senior year I, mm-hmm. Obviously, our, our junior year, um, mm-hmm. we should have went to state because we was we was a dominant team that year, and I think we had actually had more talent on our mm. team um, that junior year, and we lost the airport in the uh, in the semifinals 
of our region to go to the state, uh, we lost three to nothing. And wow. You know, I heard um, about that game. So it was raining or something, right? Yeah, it had rain all yeah. day. And it was yeah. still pouring down that night. And I think from from what they told us, the, the referees, the officials had uh, asked Coach Jennings if he wanted to delay the game and, and play the next day on Saturday. And he Definitely. Was, you, know, you, know, you know, I believe in my team. Let's go. We can we can get this thing done. And um, mm. uh, we probably had the best ground attack in the state that year with Lonnie Pulley and uh, James Cunning back here. Hold um, on. Hey, just, that night, we just couldn't get anything wow. going. So, uh, going into our senior year, uh, we knew uh, that we we had you know we had the best running back in the state. There was there was no question about it. Uh, mm-hmm. was, uh, Lonnie, I mean Lonnie wouldn't even play until the third quarter of most most games, and you know he rushed for twenty five hundred yards that year. And wow! Whoa. In high uh, school? In high school, one season as a junior. As a senior, this is our senior. Oh, senior. Wow. I mean, that's, that's, still, that's still tough. That's still tough, Rick. That's wow, wow, wow. So I yeah, so, so so Lonnie, Lonnie, you know, and we was running the option, so it was pretty much pick your poison when it came to that. Uh, mm. You know, if you was gonna take him, or if you was gonna take me. So I think that was the fun <laughs> part about our offense. And uh, you know, like I say, Coach Jennings, uh, the, the work that he did to prepare us as you know high schoolers. I think that's prepared us even more to to get ready to go to college and to excel. Right, right. So as you go into college and you being coached by Luke Hope, what was that like being coached by the young Luke Hope? What did was he did he motivate you, encourage you to play matter, quarterback? Matter of fact, you know, I, I'm trying to interrupt my cousin. I want to ask you: Did you have Luke Hope's coming to uh, to your house? Did Luke Hope's actually come to your house? Me, you know, I try to interrupt my cousin, but I want to know: Luke Hope's coming to your house? He didn't make it to the house. He made it to the high school. Um, yeah, high school. Okay. 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 Yeah, my, yeah. my position coach, Larry Beckish, who was actually the quarterback coach, and uh, and I was I was more I was really close with him because I was around him all the time. And so, uh, uh, but yeah, he coach O's made it to South Carolina and made it to Lawrence, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he ended up he actually ended up coaching at the University of South Carolina. So he uh, he had some ties there yeah. um, from the get go. But no, being coached from him, I mean, I always tell people, Coach Hope could wake up, wake up a dead man and make him play. You know, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's wow. how that's how well he could motivate, man. And he he knew every position on the field. But um, his whole thing was preparation. If you're prepared to play, and you go out and you play at a hundred percent, you're always in a game and you give yourself an opportunity to win. And that's that's exactly right. And I think uh, that led me to my the, my next my next topic that I want to talk about the little brown jug. I mean, I mean, y'all went. I think it was your senior year, and you beat you beat the number two Michigan Wolverines. That was actually my junior year, nineteen eighty. Junior, year, I'm sorry, your junior year, your junior year. Yep. Um, we what was that like? Because I think I think you know they was you know uh, Shane. I, I, mm-hmm. I asked him off air, but I, I was uh, who was the who was the quarterback of that mm-hmm. Michigan Wolverines team that 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 sweet beat beat. It's, it's gonna blow your mind. It's yeah, gonna blow your mind. I, I don't he, know. He, 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 MVP. I'm talking Michigan was big. Yeah. Oh yeah, Michigan. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, it was the coach, Jim Harbaugh. Coach, Jim Harbaugh. Wow. Yeah, I'm saying I looked that up, but I thought that was interesting. But what was it like in that game? Hey, 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 being, being being such an hey, underdog. Yeah, Rick, you gotta talk about this. This is, I didn't know you were gonna be Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, we we went down. We was actually a uh, twenty nine point underdog, and um, and no! Michigan, yep, Michigan at the time was uh, number two team in the nation, and like you said, led by Jim Harbaugh, who we all know um, went on and had a great NFL career, uh, NFL coach, and now went back yeah. to his alma mater to coach. But um, we went down, and we had confidence going into that game because my mm. my, my freshman year. We went down there and down there, and we lost to them thirty-one to seventeen. And the offense that mm. we ran, um, they had some problems uh, stopping the option offense because we was the only team in the Big Ten that ran the option. And Definitely. so, um, I think the thing that really stung them was our defense played out of their out of their minds that day. And um, good defense. And we uh, it was 14-14. And the fourth, mm-hmm. we got the ball with about 57 seconds left on the clock, and 
Mm. Uh, Coach Hose had left at that time, so he was at Notre Dame, and our head coach at that point was Coach John Gudikins. And I went over to the sideline. He he wanted to know if you want to just run out of the clock or do you want you know take a chance and see if we can get in the field goal range. Well, we yeah. get one of the best kickers, one of the best kickers in the Big Ten, a guy named Chip Low Miller. And Chip, uh-huh. was a, Chip was the first million dollar NFL kicker. Wow. wow. Yep. And so, you know, we ran the ball a couple of times and, and got into a third and ten situation. And I, he gave me a rollout to run a pass and kind of roll to my left. And, you know, if anybody know who I, who I am or if they've seen me play, they know I was going to run first in a way. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I seen a little opening. Yes, and, uh, best best running quarterbacks to come out of the state ever. You know? So I seen a little opening to my left, and I actually cut left and cut all the way back across the field and gained about 25 yards and got us in the field goal mm. with about three seconds left. And uh, Chip, Chip came out, and as I was running off the field, Chip told me to go tell him to, to start the buses up. We out of here. So, uh, mm. <laughs> start them up. Start them up. Chip. <laughs> Chip. Yeah, it's so it, it, it was the icing on the cake. And I think I think that's such an amazing game because I actually went on YouTube and watched that game and I thought that was such an amazing game with y'all being such an underdog. And like you said, that defense was outstanding. I was actually mm-hmm. looking at the stats. And, uh, you know, follow, cause I'm from Woodrow. I'm from Woodrow. The following, following year, there was a game, there was a guy by the name of Tony Rice. And I was just wondering, every time mm-hmm. I, we talk about uh, uh, the legends, yeah. there's only two people they talk about in the barbershop. Yeah, Lawrence, you was, yeah. You Lawrence, talking, Lawrence, Lawrence is Ricky Fowler right and, here. And with South Carolina, he's yeah. Tony Rice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now, what, yeah. I, 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 did, did you have some ties with Tony Rice as far as he didn't he want, then he was going, everybody thought he was going to Minnesota for Woodrow. Yeah. I, I think, uh, well, we don't speak on it, but I think my, my man here, Rick, the one that really put Tony Rice on. Right. So we'll let Rick speak on it. How, how, how did that go with, with, with Tony, man? How was the ties with Tony, Rick? You know? Because, yeah. like, obviously, to be honest, you was the first one to really do it. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so we uh, actually played, uh, when we was at Lawrence, we played Woodruff and uh, um, Jamboree. And, but, you know, I kind of played a series or two. And that was, you know, the first time when I got to meet Tony. And so that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, we... Uh, we recruited Tony to the University of Minnesota, and um, huh, that's when. Huh, huh, hey, Rick, oh, hey, Rick, I'm going to cut you off before you continue. So you, so you actually, you and you and Tony was actually on the field at the same time. You was a quarterback. Tony was a quarterback. Yeah, my senior year, and I think Tony. Oh my Tony God. Might've, Tony might have been a <laughs> might have been a freshman or a sophomore. Um, yeah, had to be, had yeah, to be, because wow. he a couple years, he about three years behind you. I bet that was a show. <laughs> We didn't play much, cause you know it's jamboree. I think we played two quarters, wow. and uh, and so I think I got a series of two, and I think Tony got a series of two. But you know, seeing wow. two brothers out there at the same time, you know that was right really at that different. time. That's what I was thinking in my head. Yeah. See, at that yeah, time yeah, of the era, seeing two brothers out there play, being a run first quarter with quarterbacks and dominating and dominating your position uh, mm. as as y'all did was, was was amazing. And and both of y'all. Was was undrafted, and I was hearing both of y'all. They wanted y'all to play different positions, and both of y'all said no. Was that? Would you still? Did you regret that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. About the Tony Rice situation. Continue. Continue with that. Look, uh, like, okay, y'all yeah, the scrimmage. I mean, the uh, jamboree. Like, what happened after that? Like, what happened? Yeah. So, uh, you know, after that, I, uh, we were five A. And uh, but so we never actually played mm-hmm. against them in the regular season. Uh, but uh-huh. I ended up going to the University of Minnesota, and uh, and Coach, uh-huh. Oates, Coach Oates had got wind of uh, that they had this other kid down in the, in South Carolina who was very similar to my skills, and so uh, wow, they went down and started recruiting Tony at, at Woodruff High School, and um, we had him committed. He was coming to the University of Minnesota, and. Uh, but after my mm-hmm. sophomore year, Coach Holtz uh, took the job at Notre Dame and actually ended up taking Tony with him. So uh, that that mm-hmm. right there, he was a very smart individual. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely, but you, but you, but but to be honest, like I say, you know, shots out of turn, but you're the, you're the one that started it. You the one that started this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you helped Tony really get on, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why a lot of people down there in Lawrence, South Carolina, man, bro, like I said, every time we go to the barber shop, and it conversation that come up about um, you and Tony. I go to uh, Russell Smith. You know Russ? Yes, sir. And they got, yeah, they got my man in there, um, Scotty. They, Scotty said he got the longest home run in Lawrence history. <laughs> but when it, you know what I'm saying, when it come up about you and Tony, they they say you was a better passer and a better runner. So, you know, but, you know, you know, That's how I know you're a Lawrence legend, but I, you know, we're, you know, yeah, you know, Lawrence. You, one about thing it. about Lawrence, they, they, they do take care of their own. So yeah, you, you ain't got a chance to win a debate if you go, if you gonna be in Lawrence. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, definitely, with both of y'all skill sets, uh, and you look back like, like I was trying to say, now that's all you see: run option, one option, black quarterback. Do you look at it like, man, I probably been first round? A hundred million dollar man right now. If I play these times, <laughs> mm. well, they know. That's a, that's a, no, no you feel like that? Uh, but no, we. Uh, I think we came along at the right time. Um, I think that. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It was just the. It was just the fact that the, the NFL uh, at that time. You know, you got to you got to think. You know, John uh, Dan Marino. You know, it was uh, mm. Steve Young. Who was mm. Steve Young? Was a runner though. Uh, he was. Uh, he was. You know, was uh, you know, the league was a passing league. You know. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they did have Randall Cunningham. He was playing at that time in the NFL. So uh, they just wasn't ready for um, black quarterbacks at that time. And so you, know, you, can't, right. you can't look back and, you know, wish that, you know, I was born at this time. Um, but no, I think we helped set the precedent of, of going to white colleges and being able to right, right. and uh to be and, and show people that black quarterbacks can lead a football team uh in a predominantly mm-hmm. white college. I think that that meant more back then because it was only a handful of us back then, back in the mid eighties. So mm-hmm. uh I'm really proud you? of that wow. and being able to um be one of the first to do it. And so I, w- I could never look back and take that away from myself. And in, in, to, in, to, in today's game right now. Out of all the quarterbacks you see, do you, you do you you still watch football, right? Man, I still coach football. You see, I know. Okay, okay, okay. I'm pretty comfortable. Don't don't don't. We don't we don't get on it. We don't get it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold on. I, 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 that's, the last, that's the last. That's the last. That's the he does. But um um. Uh, in today's game, when you're looking at it right now, who do you think kind of monitors your game? You say, man, you know what? He kind of looked like me out there. <laughs> yeah. is, it, is it Lamar Jackson who is hmm. well I, I definitely thought it was Michael Vick for sure yeah that's who I kind of yeah, seen that as, as a modern day Ricky Foggy you know I think it was Michael Vick but now I mean Lamar, Lamar Jackson is just a freak of nature man I mean this dude mm-hmm. You know he he he's continually to get better. You know his passing gonna continue to get better, but what he does with his feet is truly amazing. Right, then, right, 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 right. Then you oh. look at Patrick who, 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 Patrick Mahomes is is another one. I mean, you can't you can't make those guys. You know, and that's no, and that's where the NFL is going to these days because defenders are getting you know bigger, stronger, and faster. So your quarterbacks got to have some ability. Definitely. Got to, got to have some mobility these days. Hey, Ricky, who, um, who, um, do, do you watch college football in the NFL, or you just a pro man, or what you, uh, what you like? No, I watch it all. Who, who I watch it it all. I'm a football junkie. <laughs> well, definitely, definitely. Who, who, so, so who's, who, like, who's your, your favorite team in college, and who's your favorite team in pro in the NFL? Come on, man, Minnesota Gophers. This is my favorite college team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, classic, so you classic. Still, uh, so hey, you know what? Hey, Rick, hey, Rick, hang on. Luden came back. Y'all talk. I got a trivia, Rick. I got a trivia for you right. I got a trivia for right now. Right now, I looked at a, uh, it was a top 20, top, I think top 20 uh, Minnesota Golden Gopher. You was ranked number 17. Who do you think was ranked number one? As of what? The Gophers? All, all time, all time, as a Minnesota Golden Gopher. 
You was ranked number seventeen. Who would you think was ranked number one? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a hint. You want me to give you a hint? Oh, you got it. Uh, it's, it's, it might be this dude named Paul Gill. All uh, right, not he was close. He was up there. Ernie Beerman. Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith. He won the high. Bruce, Bruce Smith went up. Yeah, the, the, the Bruce won the high back in 1930 something. I ain't got I did I did he only played two games when he run the hole. He won that. He was the only one. He didn't play no ball. I'm just saying. He, <laughs> hey, he, was, he was ranked number yeah. one. Definitely. Yeah, that is, you're right. Yeah, Bruce is number one. He actually has a uh, <laughs> He's from Minnesota, and I actually <laughs> played against. Uh, yeah, I thought you were talking about Bruce Smith on the field. No, no, no. He was, he was the white, right, running back. I thought because when I was, you know, just, just doing studies yeah, and my yeah. research, that popped up. And I thought that was interesting. He only played two seasons. Yep, you are right. He only played two seasons. Yeah, Bruce was a bad man. Uh, he was. He was at the time. He was, he was the best. Yeah. And, um, but, but, but you said you was you was you was coaching. Who, who are you coaching now? Uh, I'm coaching high school football at this private school, uh, Univ- uh, uh, St. Thomas Academy up here in Minnesota, and I'm coaching quarterback coaching wow. quarterbacks there. You got, you, you got is uh, how, how is that going as far as uh, I know? Good with Ponte and, and Cole is crazy, but how is that? How is that? How is your season going so far? We uh, we had a shortened season, like you said, because of COVID. So uh, uh, we managed to get out, get through. We played five games um, and went five and zero, and we didn't have a playoff so, Oh, um, it's wow. tough. Yeah, it, it was it was a trying tough year, but uh, you know the kids, as long as they got to compete, and uh, so that's what it's all yeah. about. Because uh, you know the COVID is a nasty thing, man, and so we had to uh, oh, man. work our way around yeah. that. What do you What do you love more, coaching or playing? Probably both. Uh, you know, <laughs> that, um, you know, but the, I think the coaching part is is something that I took from Coach Jennings, who was our high school coach. Is you know, treat your players um, uh, with respect, uh, make them work their butts off, um, show them how to do it. Because if they're doing it wrong, it's the coach's fault. It's not the player's fault. Because you know, they're kids, and kids will do anything you ask them to do if you ask them to do it the right way. And so it is just giving That's back, you know, giving back to the community. It's something that somebody did for me when I was young coming up. And, you know, I always said if I had an opportunity to give back in the coaching world, that's that's one of the things I wanted to do. Would you would you say you, because I was looking at some of your, your coaching and the Canadian coaches and some of the players, they were saying, you would definitely say you, I would say you was a player's coach, right? Because they, they all rated by who he was and how, and how, and how, how they, they would, it was talk to you. Yeah, I wasn't hard to coach. I mean, that was that's upbringing. Being being a baby of nine kids, uh, my mom and dad was pretty stern mm. with their. Uh, wow. uh, you know, back in the day, you get your butt so, whooped back in the day if you messed up. So, so you was the you was the youngest out of nine. Yeah, they say the best for last. Wow, definitely. Yes, yes. I was the youngest. Out, I was I was the baby too. I was the youngest out of six kids, and mm. we both counts because my birthday in July too. Yours yeah. the fifteenth, mine is the sixteenth. Yes, See what I'm saying? So I knew we was gonna get along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, definitely, man, definitely a great guy, man. Uh, and like I said, Rick, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just want to appreciate you for doing this interview, man. Like I said, man, you are one of the legends of not only like Lawrence, but really the whole state of South Carolina, man. And just appreciate you uh, giving. Us your time, but I want to. I want to. I want to ask you one question. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you was playing, you know, high school football, because like really, like high school football. I love high school football. Mm-hmm. Huh? But, but Rick, when you was playing um, high school football, who was your like when you go out there on the field? Like, who was your biggest rival? Like, as far as a player, like that you looked up to, and I mean, not, I ain't gonna say looked up to, but like. You was like, you know, goodness, I got to play this cat tonight. And you, you you knew you had to perform that night. So, like, who who, who was that? Like, who would you say the baddest boy you ever played against? I'm telling you, man, uh, to be honest, um, you know, when when we we, we when we got to be um, juniors and, and with our football team, see, you, got, you guys got to remember, we played together. All of our guys, we had been playing together probably since, Pee Wee football. 
you know. And Definitely. So, um, we didn't lack any confidence, to be honest. And then when Chris Jennings took right. over uh, as a football head football coach, he was gifted some great athletes. I mean, I'm talking about Lonnie Pulley. I'm talking about Anthony Downs. You had the Norris brothers from mm. uh, from Great Court. You had Willie Dow. You had James mm. Cunningham. I mean, I, I can go down a roster. We had uh, this kid named Bill Martin, who actually played at uh, from Hickory Tavern. He actually got a ride to mm. University of North Carolina. And him and Anthony Downs played offense and defense. They never came off the field. These were offensive defensive tackles. And so... Wow. You know, it wasn't a yeah. fact and you know we wasn't cocky but we were really confident so it was I think the only team it wasn't actually an individual individual player uh, but I know my uh-huh. junior year the only team I was afraid to play against was Clinton Ooh, Red yes, Devils the Red what, Devils, what, what, what the Red Devils oh, would man. knock your head off that was the only team I was afraid to play <laughs> was Clinton <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, side side, you go, you go, ring a lot of bells. Wow, Rick, make whoa, stop, stop, cut up with that. One. Hey, Rick, hold on, <laughs> hey, hold on. Who, 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 did, who did Clinton have that? You know, I mean, was they going all the way around like y'all? Or, I mean, did y'all beat them? Or, they, they, like, was it a back and forth? Y- y- y'all beat them and they beat y'all? Or how was how was they? They, they beat us. Um, my junior year, they beat us. I know, I remember it's twenty one to twenty. They beat us in Clinton. And then my senior mm. year, uh, we turned the tables and beat them. But um, I can't, I can't even like recall some of the guys' names. But I mean, they was they was just some bad cats that could play some football, man. And they could hit. They would hit from the first quarter. They would hit through the fourth quarter. And I'm telling you, there was some <laughs> bad. They had wow. some bad brothers on that team that just loved to hit, man. And they was that. They were just that team wow. that. Okay, when you go out there on that field, you better have your chin strap on because you're just gonna get your bell rung. <laughs> hey, definitely. Hey, 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 let me ask you, man. Did they, did they have a knee thigh back then? Because I know like, I know they start wearing when they used to come to Woodrow, and they had a, like everybody had knee pads everywhere. Was they wearing knee pads back then? Yeah, we had it. We had it all back then. You had to, uh, you know, knee pad, right. thigh pads. We had everything. These cats don't wear nothing these days. But, uh, I know it. That's what we're talking about. I can imagine. Hey, who uh what, for before we let you go, I want I wanted to ask you one question before I let you go, man, because you got the coolest nickname. Who came up with the nickname? When did you start getting the nickname Sweet Feet, man? Uh, that's a good one. Uh because growing up my name was Baby. Mm. My uh my sisters because I was the baby of the family, you know, they always called you know, they right, always uh, called me Bay. And so uh I remember that was my freshman year in college. Um and when we were scrimmage against our defense, you know, these days, you know, these cats got these red jerseys on, you know, so that means you can't hit, you can't hit the quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah quarterbacks right. was live. You can, they could hit us when we were scrimmaging, and so, uh, yeah. And um, like I said, we had a pretty tough, tough defense, and we had some linebackers that was out of their minds. But uh, this one guy named Larry mm. Jordan, um, he, I met him at the line of scrimmage. And I shook him so bad, he couldn't even he couldn't he couldn't even imagine how he missed the tackle. But I shook him. And, uh, mm. and so after after the scrimmage, uh, he had a TV interview, um, and they asked him about me. And he goes, "I don't know what I got where mm. they got this cat from, but he sure got some sweet feet." So. <laughs> yeah. So that's, hey, that's, listen, that's I was waiting to ask you. Yeah. I was waiting to ask you yeah. that, man. Cause that that was what that been that been on my mind like man that's the coolest nickname Sweet Feet Falcon. That's classic. Hey, 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 Rick, like I said, I'm trying to hold you up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Rick, what was it like on your ride to the state championship? Like, what was it like? Did you have butterflies or, like I said, was you pretty much confident or like what what was it like when you went? You know, but, you know, I know, you know what I'm saying. I just, I just want to ask you that. Nah, we man. Uh, yeah, we like we like I said we when we won the, the semifinals we 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 knew we should have won our junior year. Um, that senior year we were just full of confidence and, and we knew um, um, going down to Bryce Stadium um, and and, and mm-hmm. University of South Carolina that you know we we had studied Walterboro for a whole week. 
Um, they knew they was going to try to shut down Lonnie, um, which was Lonnie. <laughs> which was pretty much impossible to do. Definitely, man. Um, so, no. Shout out my man Brian Boyd. He always talk about Lonnie. Boy. And so we, uh, when we got off the bus, they, the whole Lawrence County was there. Everybody shut down from Lawrence except for my dad, my Foggy's Barbershop. He stayed at, he stayed at the barbershop mm. and uh, listened to it on the radio. So uh, we had everybody there from home. Uh, we knew we could walk mm-hmm. on the field and uh, take care of business. Our defense shut him out, and uh, I think we end up winning either thirteen to nothing or seventeen to nothing. But uh, we, we mm. just put up a goose egg, and you know it, it, it was great. You know it was, you know, for us to be able to play in front of in that stadium in front of you know my mom and all our fans and our, our, our you know our classmates yeah. and everybody in the community came down, and uh, we went down to handle business and. You know, it was it was a great time, man. It was, and it's those memories. Um, you know, a lot of people. I do a lot of radio shows. I do a lot of, you know, I do some TV interview stuff, and people ask me, you know, what is what are your greatest memories in football? And you know, I, you know, and you have to explain to them. You know, I I played a lot of football. You know, I played after college. I played ten years in the CFL, and then I played another eight years in arena football. So. I've been around football for a long time, but I always tell people it's, it's, it's those days and uh, that I played football at Lawrence District 55 High School, the Raiders, uh, because it's those memories that we grew up with as kids. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, to, to cap it off our senior year and win a state championship in football, you know, it just made it that much sweeter, but... Uh, I mean, it was awesome, man. Growing up in that community was awesome, and you know, every time I come home and go to my dad's barbershop and hang out, it's like a class reunion. You know, all the guys come around, we hang out, and drink a cup of cold ones. So, uh, no, it, yeah. it was great, definitely, and definitely, hey, hey Rick. You know, and, and like I said once again, I want to you know appreciate you coming on the show. But this is you know this is the last question I'm gonna ask you, man. Like I say, you know, uh, you know, I know everybody's kind of busy and, you know, it, it, and this is a great, like, bro, I wish I could talk to you all day. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is great. Well, you better, you better keep but me on. I wanna, while you, you I better wanna... keep me on while you can, man. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but, but I'm finna, I'm, but I'm finna ask you, I'm finna ask you a classic, I'm finna ask you a classic question. You know what I'm saying? I'm who, who was your, like, you, you, and you, and you was talking with your dad, you used to cut hair. And like who uh who was your dad? Cause I like I used to go to the Foggy Boys down there in the cut. And you had to turn down a little gravel driveway with my I used to go with my dad, rest speech my dad. I used to go to the little gravel driveway. Like my man used to the, the, the cat used to cut my hair, um, had the had like the Jerry curl, it was in the first chair over there. Which one was your dad? That was man? my uncle Robert. No, no, no. That was Uncle George. Okay. That was Uncle, he, bro, he that was, that was my Uncle George. Oh, man. That was my Uncle George. Let me take that back. Cause George had the Jerry oh. girl. That was um no, my dad. Yeah, yeah the, the, the long joint. Yeah, that my dad is, is Moody. Yeah. Moody Foggy. He was he's the one that owned the barbershop. So he was Wow. Yeah, so my dad, like I said, he's owned it since nineteen fifty nine. And uh Wow and he still has it to this day. And, uh, wow. Wow. Um, he got COVID about six months ago. And so he's been he's been battling that um in the hospital for the last four or five months. And uh, Wow man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear he's, that, man. He's fighting. He's what a fighter, man. Out? He's eighty four years old and he's he's fighting his way out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um I just wanna get we definitely, we definitely praying for we, the good guys are definitely praying yeah. for him, man, because we not we did not know that. But I'm glad you spoke on that because we definitely got we definitely got war and prayers of war. William, warriors to pray over here. We definitely yeah. gonna pray. We definitely gonna fight for you, for your, for your father, you for our health and strength. Man. But yeah, yeah Bobby, Bobby, and uh, Bobby before Bobby we go out, there's uh, before we go, before we, before we uh, let you go, is there anything you wanted to say about about the team coming up next season? Anything you wanna let the viewers know about? No, I just wanna, I wanna give a shout out to all of my classmates. Um, that's in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be listening to this broadcast. I wanna let them know that I love them. I appreciate all the love they showed me uh, when we was in high school. I want to, and they still show me love through my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and I just want to let them know uh, because, uh, like my man Ronnie Kane, 
and he's like a little brother to me. But shout, shout out, out to Ronnie. Ronnie. Shout <laughs> out to Ronnie. Give a shout out yeah, to Ronnie yeah, Kane, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. want to let him know that the class of 84 was the best class to come through Lawrence County. There it is. There it is. It's your boy, Mark Goodman, a.k.a. the Boss Box of the Block. And we out. One.